Hi, I'm Leo Williamson and recently I had the privilege of visiting the Coaching for Life programme in Jakarta, Indonesia with Save the Children and the Arsenal Foundation. I think Jakarta is probably one of the busiest places I've ever been. People sitting, you know, out the front of their houses, kids playing in the street. I mean, I thought London was busy, but yeah, Jakarta is a whole new level. Yeah. Going away with the foundation and, and seeing the presence of this football club over there because of the Coaching for Life programme is just amazing. There's a real North London feel to, to Jakarta, which is honestly ridiculous um, to, think, to think of if you've ever visited the, the, the two places. The active class is a value of Arsenal Football Club, and I think that is at the centre of it all. It's exactly what the kids need. It's exactly what the communities need. Um, Save the Children and the Arsenal Foundation have got the perfect balance and to have a green pitch is something but to create this community hub around it um, which Save the Children and the Arsenal Foundation have done is just something so so special and to have this green space, to have this sort of oasis in, in such a deprived area for people to be able to go and, and enjoy that I think that's what makes it feel like North London. You know you've got this big Emirates Stadium and this community hub right in the middle of, of life, of real life. And it's somewhere that people can go and feel special. That's the main thing that links the two places together, um, which I think is really special. You hear coaching for life and you, you just think football. Um, and it's almost naive because I know the work that goes on in the, in the hub in North London and I think it's about so much more than that. You speak to the girls about what they get from the sessions and they don't necessarily talk about the football. It's, it's about the whole package that comes with it. It's about the confidence, it's about the resilience that they're taught, it's about the self-belief. In one of the sessions we actually did a, an exercise about you know being positive about ourselves and, and, and telling each other what we were good at and I just think that really hit home to me that it's so much more than football. Um, football's just the, the common ground that can bring us together. Coaching for life it is generally you know, preparing these girls for, for life instead of just time on the pitch. So this is the river, wow. as you can see. The big flood. And then hit. It's directly the houses. The, the State of the Children team, especially um, on the first day after we visited the pitch, we walked down to the riverbed. This river overflows every year. The Save the Children workers are so resilient and I got that straight away and especially with me trying, trying to express to me how much devastation you know, these families go through and, and these children go through on a daily basis, yet they're the ones that sort of try and pick everybody up and, and fix things. So I think they were the most amazing people and especially how much, um, you know, I really wanted to get a real understanding of what the people go through um, and, and the circumstances that they live in and uh, the effort that those guys, you know, took with me, especially Ria, she was, um, yeah, she was exceptional with me. Hi, I'm Leah. Pula sekolah dia jualan di di samping rumah. Dia harus bekerja. Karena kalau misalnya dia nggak bekerja, mama dia sama adik dia mau dimakan masih makan apa? Dia was probably one of the best people I've ever met. So strong yet so unaware of how strong she was. She talked to me quite a lot about how much of a role model I was to her or, or how strong I was and how that's what she wanted to be but actually she doesn't realise that she's ten times stronger than me already. Yeah she was just an incredible incredible young woman. For everything that she, she juggles and balances in her life she wakes up early, goes to the shop to get stuff for her stall that she then runs after school um, outside of her house to support her family. She then finds time to go to the go to the pitch and, and take that time for herself, which I, which has made me so happy and that make, makes me so proud of the project um, because that's the only time that week that she probably does that. Um, and then, you know, I had a conversation with her. She's telling me this whole schedule and she doesn't even mention that actually she's uh, babysitting in the evenings as well to make a bit more money and to support her family further. She didn't see any of it as, as abnormal, she just saw it as her responsibility and that's what she had to do. Um, so yeah, I think her strength is something that will stay with me for a long, long, long time. To come to a club like Arsenal and to be part of that family I think is really special for her and to have people look after her. She does a lot of the looking after um, when she's at home, um, so I think 
she's definitely become more resilient. She's definitely become more confident in herself um, and it's showing her that she can break down the boundaries that she wants to. She, she went to visit the deputy minister um, to fight for change and to, to make him aware of the problem of child labour in our area and, and the homelessness of children um, that are then forced into the child labour. And I just think considering what she goes through on a daily basis to have time to think of other people um, just shows the person that she is. So I think that going to the, to the pitches, going to the programme and to have people care for her um, and to teach her things, you know, she's, she's sort of finding her own way in the world, but actually she's a child and she should be, should be given the support that she needs to, to be the best person she can. Uh, we're often so self-absorbed that we forget to, to think about others and she just is the complete opposite to that. Um, she thinks about nothing but other people. So um, yeah, we, although she probably didn't realise that she was the one giving me advice, I, I probably took a lot more from her than she did from me. Do you want to pick one and then I'll sign it? The one that she picked was me, um, massive grin, fists uh, clenched running down the steps at Wembley after we just won the FA Cup. Um, and Kelly Smith's actually in the background who was obviously my hero. Um, so I wrote a message, uh, something that Kelly once wrote on a, on a picture for me, which was dream big. Kelly Smith was one of my idols because she was a fighter, um, something that I try and replicate on the pitch um, and something that Dia absolutely personifies off it. So um, hopefully, you know, that even just a little message on a picture will be enough to, to remind her of, of the conversations we had and, and hopefully, you know, inspire her for years to come. It was a very emotional trip for me just because it's, it's hard to process what these, what these young girls go through. I'm thinking that's going to be enough that you know I'm going to stand up there and, and just be a figure for them to look at and, and hopefully dream to be but actually how much they appreciate the programme just highlights how much we take for granted over here and it's not changeable overnight but I've supported the Arsenal Foundation before but now I've seen it firsthand and I, I, yeah, I can't be passive anymore and yet if sharing my experience from being out there is, is enough to do that then um, you know that's, that's what I'll do but yeah I think yeah, I've, I've been given this, this massive opportunity to go out there and see how they live and, and really get into their lives and, and the way they think and, and feel and something that I can definitely use to help people over here I think.